Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing Ride 4. We're here on the Aprilia RS250, and away we go! Starting from 6th place in the grid, but of course we will hang fire just a little bit. We will start from the back of the grid. We are doing the Italian Style Part 1 DLC, and of course this is featured two of the bikes from the DLC, the Aprilia RS250 being one of my favourite bikes of all time. I think it's absolutely awesome. I'm really surprised that this wasn't already in the game. £4 later and I finally have it in the game, so not too bad as we are in Mugello and that was a beautiful move up on the inside of quite a few riders. As we now go into Poggio Secco for the very first time, we could go around the outside, potentially up on the inside of Ruben Fourier. If we do go around the outside potentially, could we hold it in? We could certainly make a lunge, but we hold off for the time being. As we exit Bogos, <laughs> our ends are very close there from bumping the other rider, but it's quite alright. We're still on board this motorcycle. This not being the full Magello circuit, this is the shorter east course or south course. Can't remember what it's called exactly. I'm not a big fan of this particular style of the track. I much prefer the entire track. But I don't make the rules. This was part of the DLC. This is the the Italian style part one world tour group. However the hell it's called, I've completely forgotten. My mind has gone blank for this one, and we're going to be entering San Donato for the second time. Hard braking zone, but on these Aprilias, the brakes are fantastic. I didn't actually upgrade it. I simply took off the mirrors, I took off the rear plate, and I just changed uh, the tyres. So I didn't delve into all the performance upgrades and any upgrades, really. I simply looked at changing the tyres and removing the few parts I've mentioned. So, it is relatively a stock bike, and I've got to say, for a bike that's this good, it doesn't really need any extra boost. It's already extremely quick. It's a fantastic motorcycle. Very easy to use, very smooth on the throttle. Certainly, it doesn't wheelie. It certainly doesn't kick out. It's a great bike. I must say, I'm extremely impressed. Very, very impressed with this bike. Very pleased to be using it. When I was looking into my license, my bike license, and it's for quite a while ago, I did consider potentially the battle between the Honda CBR125, the Yamaha YZFR 125, and of course the Aprilia RS250. Now the Aprilia RS250 at the time would have been too much for a CBT because it's simply too much brake horsepower. It's 33 brake horsepower compared to the 13.6 or 14.6 brake horsepower you were allowed, something like that back in the day. As we are now closing in on Osvaldo Pavon and we go around the outside annoys me when the AI does that, so I'm going to let him get past again. Because it, Just because I'm near you doesn't mean you have to lift up the entire motorcycle and take evasive action. I'm not reckless. I might have got a bit close to you there, my friend, but we're still racing. And rubbing is racing, and racing is rubbing, and subscribe to Dot Trace if you haven't done already. Makes sense to me. If you're enjoying the video, now would be a great time to do so, because we're on a long straight. And you can't really miss much on a long straight. So it'll only take a couple of seconds just to quickly scroll down, hit the subscribe button, leave a little like as well because you're just that kind of a dude. And we get straight back into the action. And look at that. We've not even made it into San Donato. As we go down into San Donato yet again, nice braking zone. We're going to go a little bit wide there, but not too wide. It's quite all right. I checked the insides to make sure that uh, Zvalda wasn't going to have to go for a cheeky lunge. And therefore we would have to slam the door shut in his face. But well, that wasn't necessary for this particular time, and we are now escaping Osvaldo Pavon, the Spaniard. I think I made up a stop. Oh, a little bit too eager on the rear brake there. I was uh, pushing a little bit too much. Now, the tyres are somewhat cold here, and it is still 24 degrees here in Mugello. It's uh, 20 to 12. So I'm surprised the tyre has taken quite a bit of a battering, and yet it is still quite cold. Maybe I'm just a little bit too eager, but at the same time also not pushing enough. Work that one out. It makes sense to me. <laughs> well, there is a lot of straights where the tyres would cool down as well, effectively so. It somewhat makes sense to me. But i got to say, loving this bike, loving this DLC pack, the Moto Guzzi, which I uploaded a video a couple of days ago, is terrific. Very, very impressed with that bike. I think it's absolutely terrific. I will be using that forever and ever. Even once I attain the level 5 affinity on that one, which probably won't be too long, I will definitely still use that motorcycle because I think it's absolutely awesome as we just hand ourselves our very first penalty in this race so far. A little bit of a mistake on my part going onto the green. And of course, as you know, you don't go on the green, you don't abuse the track limits. 
So therefore, there is a chunky penalty to say, stop it, and don't do it again. <laughs> so we're now into, which is effectively the final corner here. We'll be holding it right once more for turn seven. Hook it in tight, avoid the cones as well, of course, if you can. A little bit of a stutter there, so probably someone's gone down. And that concludes race one of today's Grand Prix. So a quick swig of the LucasAid apple for that extra bit of energy while during commentating. And now it's going to be time for Imola to give it everything we've got starting from the back of the grid. Nice start. Not too bad. Oh, of course, I'm trying to stay somewhat reserved because I don't want to just absolutely smash it. As we get a bit of a funky wheelie there. Didn't have that in mind. It was going to go for a little bit of a braking lunge too early. As we now break into turn one for the very first time. Hold it right, and we have... Oh, my goodness. Oh, carnage! Absolute carnage! Chaos! Carnage! Is in been in... Oh, God, it's been ensued already. Unbelievable. I cannot race with any of these guys without someone bloody crashing on the first lap. This was, again, another video I had to restart a couple of times because everybody kept dying in the first corner. But that... Oh, my goodness! Another crash! Are you kidding me? Oh, I'm looking at the... <laughs> Look at the background, everyone just crashing. Oh my goodness. What is wrong with AI in this game sometimes? Now, Imola, I don't know if it's like this in real life. It might be, but I don't think it's to this extent. It's extremely, extremely bumpy. And I don't know if they've done that a little bit overboard in this game, but it seems like every other corner you're just sort of bop bopping and bouncing. It's just, it's a little bit odd. I've never ridden a motorcycle on this magnificent track, so I can't speak for anyone else to say that that's true. But if you do know in the comment section, let me know if it is really that bumpy. Because I think someone definitely needs to take a look at resurfacing this track sooner rather than later. But of course I didn't mention, or at least don't think I mentioned, that this is the Aprilia RS250RM. So it's the same bike, effectively, as the first one, but with the race modifications. Oh my goodness, give him a good old shove. Do apologise, Fabio Vassalo. That was not what I intended to do. But of course, this being the race-modified version, it is much quicker, and it's, it's a little bit more of a beast. I mean, the Aprilia RS250, regardless whether it's the RM or the standard model, are just beasts of bikes. They're fantastic. It's really good, and <laughs> I do recall just, uh, I was veering off a little bit because I was hoping that Fabio would give me a bit of a run for my money on the straight, but he just didn't bother. So, I just veered off to the right for no reason. So we now will chase down Fausto Gavassoni. Never mind, he's already crashed. Thanks a lot, Fausto. I guess I'll do it myself. So I will be the guinea pig, and I will continue to lead this Grand Prix of Imola. A terrific track, certainly one of my favourites. And I'm very, very pleased to be using it again. It's one of those tracks that comes up and I go, yes, sign me up for some Imola. Obviously, the British tracks all get that sort of treatment, and there's a few tracks that certainly don't get that treatment. <laughs> but this one, for the time being, is certainly, yes, thumbs up from Dr. Ace. Thumbs up from you as well, I'm, I'm sure. Or at least a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video, of course. But it's now half past six, 25 degrees here in Imola. We have a nice, comfortable... <laughs> I was going to say a little lead, but it's uh, certainly a large lead now, coming up to 9 seconds. And it's probably just going to go even higher and higher. Potentially even a 10 second lead. And considering it's only the second lap, or at least approaching the third lap, it's a bit concerning for the rest of the field, don't you think? But it's a little bit uh, disheartening if you were Alvin Finch or Fausto Gavassoni. Now, Fausto Gavassoni was leading the Grand Prix for practically the whole duration of that point until he decided to have a kiss on the gravel, which was uh, an interesting choice, definitely. The tarmac did not kiss him back. Uh, he, uh, he just decided to whack him. Uh, it was a bit of a disappointment, because I was really looking forward to pulling off some wicked moves. My favourite overtaking point is usually turn 13, or even just before turn... or even during Revarza. And of course, the classic Variante Bassa. That is a terrific corner to overtake at. And I'm going to run it in a little bit hot there. Nope, looked alright. It looked a little bit hot from where I was sitting. But I'm pleased to say that we still navigated that corner absolutely marvellously. So shout out to the Dot Trace Aces, everyone in the Discord server. If you haven't joined the server already, now would be a great time to do so. The link is in the description. 
or at least the name of the Discord server is. I do tend to post the link, but it gets out of date very quick. So if you would like to join and you don't have a link and you don't know how to get onto it, you can just type in hashtag stay ace and that should come up. But if it does not, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you guaranteed in a couple of hours at the latest with a brand new Discord invite link. So don't fear, don't fret if you haven't uh, received it and you want to join. I will always make sure you get in there. And of course, I'll always read the comment section. So it's a win-win. It's the best place to speak to me nowadays. Of course, I do have social media as well if you are interested in joining me in there. I'm more than happy to speak to any of you anywhere at any time. So just message me if you fancy it. That's all All I'm pretty much going to say. <laughs> If, uh, if, you're, if you're inclined and you want to follow this channel further, then that's the best place to do it. I do try and keep up to date with everything, so uh, bear that in mind if you would like to continue our relationship. Because I do believe we are developing something special here on this channel. At 850 subscribers, which I fingers crossed is not that far away from 900 or even the whopping 1000 that I'm very, very excited to try and get to. I really want that community tab. Help me get the community tab, please. <laughs> And of course, I will be live streaming in two weeks' time. I was thinking of live streaming this weekend, but unfortunately, I couldn't manage it. I didn't have the opportunity to do so. So the next time I will be live streaming is the 6th of March, and that will be at 8 p.m. GMT. So I really hope everyone can join me, and I really hope we can have the same or similar numbers to what we had last time. It was fantastic. We're probably going to race online again or do something a little bit different. Potentially, we'll do 20 laps of the Nordsch Life or something like that. We can certainly discuss that upon the date of the uh, of the live stream, but I'm very excited and very eager to do another live stream because the last one went so well and I had such a great time that I really want to do it again. And I do want to plan to do these live streams every once every month or something close enough to. So let me know in the comment section down below if you're going to be turning up. I'll be dropping that message in most of the comment sections from now on so you can see. And uh, I'm very, very eager, so I hope to see you there. Fingers crossed I see all of you there. But there's not really much for me to discuss in this one as we enter turn 6 of Variante Villeneuve. There's not much because we are up the road by 16 seconds. I was not expecting to absolutely dominate here in Imola, but <laughs> it's happened. So that's what we've got to deal with today. A nice, comfortable Sunday drive, if you will. Just riding the motorcycle, enjoying the wind flow through one's hair. And it's a relatively pleasant evening here in ten past seven in Imola. It's quite relaxed. We're just uh, thrashing the motorcycle around <laughs> Imola into the Accu Minerale. Really brilliant track and on this terrific bike as well. I will be doing more of the Italian style part one because of course there is more tracks to be done in this particular uh, career mode event. So stay tuned for more of those. I mean, doing another part to the Moto Guzzi bike as well because I thought that was terrific. Really, really like that bike. Let me know in the comments section what your favourite bike is of this DLC pack. If you haven't bought the DLC pack and you're looking for a bit of advice whether you should need it or not, or if you just think it's four pound, what do I want it? I'm gonna say yes. I would, I would definitely recommend this DLC pack. There's some terrific motorcycles. It's very Aprilia heavy, and I was surprised not to see a single Ducati in that group. But I'm guessing there will be then a Ducati pack in the future because I'm sure that'll sell extremely well. But as we now enter Variante Bassa for the second to last time, we will be approaching that one more time upon this completion of this lap, which will take us to lap five of five. So the final lap with a very, very comfortable 20 second lead. And yes, that is a whopping 20 second lead. There's not been much of me discussed in this one, so I really hope you're still stuck around and listen to me waffle on about everything and nothing. And I hope you've just enjoyed the video in general. Just smooth, confident riding. It's great stuff. This bike's awesome. There's not much more else to say with it, really. I'm just really impressed with it. I'm very happy. As we enter Variante Villeneuve. And we'll be approaching one of the best corners in this game, but very, very difficult to master. I always tend to go either too wide or too tight. I never seem to get that one right for some strange reason. Toaster is a little bit of a bugger sometimes, and for some reason AI always crashes there. Or close enough to. I'm a big fan of this left-hander as well. This one just flows so beautifully. Piratella is, oh, beautiful. Might as well call it Frutella because it's that sweet. And that was cringy, but <laughs> I'm pleased I made that joke on the fly. It was not scripted. <laughs> Hashtag... 
Fruitella in the chat. Shout out to Johnny Glamour. Shout out to Fruitella. Shout out to Boojang Bengana. And I'm going to surprise you and I'm going to chuck in a brand new hashtag shout out. Carlos Pava Diaz. <laughs> Carlos Pava Diaz. Whenever I do the World Superbike Leagues. For some reason, his name gets brought up so much. And I don't just mention it once and change it to the Brazilian. I still stick with Carlos Pedro Diaz. It sounds so good to say. It rolls off the tongue beautifully. Carlos Pedro Diaz. <laughs> so guys, that is going to complete this video in a moment's time. Once we navigate turn 16 the correct way. Which we do. Very, very tasty. I think we're going to have a nice funky wheelie. See if we can hold it all the way across the line. And guys, that's it. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you haven't done it already. It's the best place to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And I will see you next time. Ciao for now. Oh hi! Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.